So in this video, I'm going to show you how I went about making my game in Bitsy, Death and Taxes, Debt and the Tokugawa Samurai. So I actually started making this game in Twine. Um, so if you haven't seen the Twine tutorial series and are interested in making games in Twine as well as in Bitsy, you can go ahead and check out that playlist that we have on the Epoch Games YouTube channel. Um, but yeah, so I started making the game in Twine and basically my idea was to make the exact same game in Twine and Bitsy and to see what some of the similarities and differences were um, and what kinds of games Twine and Bitsy were good to make. Uh, so I'm going to walk you through some of the highlights of how I designed this game and some of the things that um, uh, I think stand out. Um, this is what it looks like when you first open it up. Um, it, it just starts out here in this room and then basically you get a couple of um, basically like background info dumps on like who the samurai are, like what, what life as a samurai is like in the Tokugawa period, what are some of the financial challenges that they face, and then the rest of the game is kind of putting you in the shoes of a samurai and illustrating that struggle um, and what choices are available to you. So um, once you get past this room, you basically enter into a room that looks like this, um, and the premise of the game is that you um, are a samurai and you're waiting um, for your next paycheck. Um, which it happens to be in about six months. So you get paid twice a year as a samurai, um, and every month something bad happens to you. This is a tragic time, uh, your financial position is very difficult, um, and there's lots of things that you can't account for. So every month um, you interact with uh, this object, which um, increases, so it's one, two, three, um, as the months progress, and then we end on the six month. Um, but yeah, every month something new bad happens to you, and then you have to make a decision about how you want to try to increase your financial standing. So you can um, revisit your family budget, you can take out a loan, you can sell some of your belongings, etc. Um, and there are um, some pros and cons to each of those. And your goal is to keep your finances above zero and your pride above zero for the full duration of the game. So let me show you how I made some of the assets you see here in the game. Um, so if we go over to the paint tab, you can see this is how I made my avatar. It's very simple. I just have a really simple animation on him um, just to give him a little bit of life and movement. And I didn't do a lot of animating for most of the game, and I think that's okay. I don't think the game like needs a ton of animation. It does add a little bit of character, but um, I had forgotten to do it, honestly, and I started making this tutorial series, and I decided I didn't really need it. Um, but I did animate some of these opening events. Um, one thing that I did is um, I wanted to, so here, let me, maybe I'll give you a better example. So one thing that I wanted to do was when you interact with an item, I wanted it to be able to disappear. So same with these. Um, I wanted you to be forced into basically, so if you spawn in the room here, I wanted you to be forced to interact with that one, which gives you basically the setting for the month, um, what your situation is, and then I wanted you to make your decision um, and have have basically these items and these dialogue options disappear so you would only be able to make that decision once. Um, so I had to make everything in the game an item rather than a sprite um, so that it would disappear because if you had a sprite, I found out the hard way because I made all of these as sprites before I made them as items. Um, it would just stay here. Um, like you would run into it and it would just stay forever and ever and ever. Um, and that's not what I wanted. I wanted them to disappear. So I had to change all of my, uh, basically every every game object in my game, I had to switch over from a sprite to an item, which was really frustrating. But um, let me show you how I made some of these sprites. So um, let me put the avatar back at the beginning. Um, so let me show you what the month looks like on the back end. So let me go over to my items. Um, and then, so month one. So basically month one, um, so there's kind of a lot that goes on here. So it looks a little intimidating, um, but I'll, I'll walk you through it. Basically, um, you get the premise for what's going on this month here. So you need to revise your family budget. Um, you have to pay with funeral costs, etc. And then there are some calculations that go on to adjust um, your current financial standing um, based on what tragedy has just befallen you. So you have to pay for the funeral, um, which was 60 Monmei, so that gets deducted from your finances. Um, and then basically I had to do a lot of kind of frustratingly complicated if statements uh, to determine like what would happen in the game at what time. So 
if your budget, for example, like if your finances go below zero, then um, I wanted you to get basically a bad ending. Like, so it said, so you get the text, sadly, you mismanage your budget and run out of money, blah, 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 blah. And then uh, it gives you your final score, which tells you your finances, um, your pride, and your monthly expenses. And then it ends the game right there. Um, same thing happens if your pride goes below zero. Um, it just gives you a different, uh, you know, flavor text. But yeah, so the premise is that you're keeping your budget above zero and you're keeping your pride above zero. Um, and that's like the main goal of the game. So if you don't do that, obviously you need a lose state. You need a fail state. Um, but if you um, don't fail in either of those ways, if you keep going, if you keep your budget above zero and your pride above zero, um, then uh, basically you get to go on and make a decision. So you get to interact with one of these columns of things to decide what you want to do to try and increase your financial standing. So maybe let's do um, the sell your belongings one, which I know I marked as option C. Um, and then this is what it looks like. So the, the first time you interact with it, so I've made a sequence of events, um, and this will make more sense if you've seen the tutorials. So if you haven't seen the tutorials yet, this might be pretty confusing, but um, this, this video is just to give you a sense of um, like the work that went into this game and what kind of game you can make in Bitsy. Um, but this will probably be way more complicated than whatever game you want to make um, because a game this complicated is not required for your class. Um, but anyway, so if you interact with this icon, the first time you interact with it, um, it'll basically tell you what it does. Will you sell some of your belongings? Um, and then it'll disappear, and then you'll have the option to interact with this one, um, or decide, no, I don't want to sell any of my belongings, I'm going to click on a different option and try something else. But if you did continue and you did um, move through and click on this guy, um, then... So if you've already interacted with it, maybe in a previous room, it would be marked as true because I made all of these booleans. Um, so if you if you interact with it, it gets marked as true. And then the next time you interact with it in a new room, it says you've already sold what you could and you basically can't use that option ever again. But if you've never interacted with it before, so if option C is false, which is the default setting, um, then it, it turns it to true, um, it lowers your pride, increases your budget because you're selling some stuff so you get some money back um, and then it gives you that flavor text of um, what you sold and that impact that it had on you so one other thing that i wanted to show so at the bottom here there's a line of code that says um, action equals one basically i wanted um so you had to complete one action in this room so go down one of these lanes um you know move to the countryside sell your belongings sell your sword do nothing, whatever it is. You have to pick one of these things. Um, and then once your action is equal to one, then uh, there's a, an invisible door here that will unlock once your actions um, reach one. But if your actions are zero, so say in month one, you sell your belongings and then you go to month two um, and you try to sell your belongings again, um, but because you've already done it, you can't do it again. So you only get this line of dialogue and your actions remain at zero. Um, you get to this door and your actions are at zero and it says, sorry, you have to do an action. Um, so that's just um, a, a way to kind of force players into playing the game the way that I've designed it. Um, even though I think what I designed in Twine does not translate perfectly to Bitsy. And I think if I were to do this again, I would, I would probably try to make a game that like, is more inspired by the tools that are available to me in Bitsy. Um, something that is a lot more visually informed, I think, because that's what Bitsy does so well, and, like, the visuals of Bitsy are just so charming, but I made a game that was very, like, text-based and very code-based, so um, I would not recommend doing that if you're using Bitsy, um, because obviously you can see the code gets kind of convoluted here, like, seriously, like, look how much code I had to write um, to do some fairly simple things, um, and I think it's just formatted better in other platforms. So if you're gonna have like a text heavy or a code heavy game, I don't recommend Bitsy, but something visually heavy, definitely recommend. Um, but I think I had the most fun though, uh, just kind of messing around, like making different sprites and stuff. Cause I went through a bunch of different iterations of these because I originally had um, all of this stuff. So let me go back to this page so you can actually see how these are related. Um, 
originally I had these all designed, um, like I said before, as sprites, but I also had them as, um, so I had the, the numbers, but I had the letters as well. So um, option A, which is this money stack right here, was an A. Um, option B was a B. So I went through several different rounds um, iterating on this to try and figure out how I wanted to communicate the idea of the different options to the players. So if you want to play this game for yourself, you can find it um, at this link, um, which is my itch.io page, and it's Death and Taxes Bitsy. Um, so the, the game will look like this. You can play it in your browser. Um, and then I've also linked to, to the tutorial series that you're currently watching. So if you ever need to find it again and you get lost, um, it'll be right here. Um, and then another thing that I wanted to include is here is the HTML file that is the game. Uh, so if you want to put this in your own Bitsy, if you want to import it in your own Bitsy and look at the code, um, look at the sprites, just try and see what I did on the back end, you are more than welcome. This is open source. Um, you are super welcome to download this and tinker with it on your own.